Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. I've got about 185 miles on this Royal Enfield Himalayan Scram 411 and uh, I've learned quite a bit riding this thing. Uh, it's really changed my opinion on the whole thing. I really like the motorcycle. I love the way it handles. It's much more nimble than I expected it to be. It's a lot of fun to ride. It's easy to get on and off of even though it has the same about the same seat and seat height. Just a uh, just an absolute hoot. We'll go over what the bike is. I'll tell you what I've learned about it lately and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about what I think. Let's go for a ride. Wow. So this is a 411 cc single overhead cam, single cylinder, two valve per cylinder, little hot rod. Puts out about 24 horsepower, 25 foot pounds of torque, 24 foot pounds of torque. That's about 32 newton meters. This one has a Zard pipe on it, high pipe. This bike has a five speed transmission, which is on this particular model, even smoother than the one I have on my Himalayan. We're gonna compare this to my Himalayan today. Uh, other details about this bike, it's got a 57.3 inch wheelbase, that's 1,455 millimeters. Ground clearance is about 200 millimeters or 7.9 inches. It has 41 millimeter forks on the front with a travel of about seven and a half inches or about 190 millimeters. The rear is uh, 7.1 inches of travel. It's a monoshock on the rear. That's about 180 millimeters. The front tire is a 190-19. The rear tire is a 120-90-17. I like the way that pipe sounds. Very nice pipe. The weight of this little hot rod with a full tank of fuel, it's got a four gallon fuel tank, that's about 15 liters. Anyway, it weighs uh, 409 pounds wet. That's about 185 kilograms. That's pretty darn good. That's about 7% less than the standard Himalayan. And then they put this Zard pipe on here, which I really think is tuned for the uh, low and mid range, because I, I think this thing has a little more snap than the uh, average Scram 411. I've driven a couple of those over the years, over the last year. What a great day for a bike ride. I just love it. It's supposed to rain here in about an hour, so we're just kind of stay local. <laughs> run about a town here and just see what we can find out maybe we'll go to the next town that's just 10 miles away I've been wet before boy this thing is just it does the city really good I mean look at this very easy handling much lighter handling than my Himalayan that 19 inch wheel on the front really does make a difference a little party going on back there we might end up there later <laughs> if it doesn't rain I would say this bike's forte would be town and city riding with the ability to ride gravel well. I've ridden this on gravel before, not this particular one, but other models like it, and it does very well. I think it's less stable on gravel than a uh, standard Himalayan, but I also think that's why the handling is more nimble, better handling. Some of the other neat things about this, I like the uh, switch gear, and I really do like this gauge up here, the singular gauge. The switch gear on the left has a flash to pass button, a high low for the light, a blinker button, and then the horn below. On the right we've got the information button up here. We've got a kill switch, on switch, and the start button on the right. We also have hazard lights right there. Uh, the gauge itself, so I like the standard Himalayan's gauge. I think it was dated when it came out initially, but I, I'm old so I like that kind of thing. I love this one. I think this is really neat. The only thing it's missing is a tachometer. But I think it's much easier to, uh, all the information is more centralized. You know, it's got the arc speedometer, which somebody like me likes. It's got a fuel gauge on the inside. It's got an always showing clock and always showing gear indicator, which is always nice. And it's got trip A, trip B, and the odometer, which is controlled with this information button here on the right. But it, all the information is centralized. It's all easy to look at, and I like the way it is. The uh, blinker lights are down below here. I'll turn them on. I wish those were up higher, I always like that up higher, but uh, I can put up with it on this bike. It's also at a good angle, it's easy to read. To the right of that is the uh, trip nav system. I have not used that on this particular motorcycle yet, but I have used it on other bikes. You do have to download the Royal Infill app to get it to work. It does give you some pretty good information. Uh, what's really neat about it is it tells you your distance to your destination. So if you put in a location and go wandering, you always know how far you are from where you want to go. I'm going to show you guys the world's largest anatomically correct bull. This was built in the 1960s to celebrate Audubon County's 
beef industry. I live in Audubon County, Iowa. But uh, he's fully equipped with gear. So <laughs> I can't remember how tall he is. 25 feet or something like that. Anyway, fun little motorcycle, huh? What a great day for a bike ride. This thing has a great ride, by the way. Another thing I haven't talked about are the handlebar risers. They have put handlebar risers on this bike, which have brought the bike, which which have brought the bars up about an inch or more, maybe maybe an inch and a half. This is the big town of Exira, population 900. This used to be the county seat of Ottoman County. This is really where it all started happening in this county. Everything was down here in the southern part. Exira is having their big Fourth of July celebration. That's a very big deal here. Look at that fair. Y'all see Joe Dirt in there anywhere? Hey, let's go around it. So I like the ride and I like the handling. I think that's uh, two things. I also like the little bit of extra power that this thing has, seems to have. And I really like that Zard Pike on here. It's got a very good sound from the rider seat. We are going to take the long way home. I don't see the rain yet. I'm sure I can get myself caught in it again. This bike does the two-lane blacktops exceptionally well. I just really enjoy it. It's very confident, very uh, good feeling. And she seems to handle the speed just fine. Uh, going up and down hills should hold 65 and even 70 without any problems. I like it. I like it a lot. Beautiful day for a ride. I can start feeling that rain, so I'm a little worried. I can feel the humidity and the coolness coming in. <laughs> I'm about 20 some miles from home. Wahoo! This nifty road I call Helicopter Road is also known as Pheasant Avenue. I call it Helicopter Road because there's a helicopter business up here and sometimes their helicopters are out and kind of neat to look at. So I said I'd compare this to my Classic and what I think about that. Well, it's physically larger than the Classic, has more power, it's faster for sure. This bike will go 80, 85 maybe. It'll easily go 70 all day long. Even though the seat height is claimed to be shorter than the Classics, it feels much taller. This is where the helicopters are. Nothing out today. The Classic is easier to handle in the garage, easier to push around, easier to drive around town, easier to whip around. This is almost as easy, but you know, it's a slightly bigger bike. It actually weighs less than the Classic, but it has a higher center of gravity, which means the Classic feels a little more maneuverable than this does. I always talk about the Classic having that Zen feeling, that very calming feeling. I think this kind of has that, but not like the Classic does. I think there's really something special about the Classic in that area. So this over the Classic would be the extra speed, the larger size, the more capable uh, off-road capability. By the way, the Classic does pretty good off-road. This would just have more capability, more ground clearance, more suspension, more power. Sometimes you'll see fox in this yard. I think we beat the rain home. It's just a beautiful evening for a ride. Just a beautiful evening. I suppose we went 50 miles or so. One thing I've learned riding this motorcycle is that I've absolutely underestimated its value in the Himalayan lineup. I'm gonna jump out on a limb and say that if you think you want a Himalayan, you should absolutely ride this one. I think 90% of people that want a Himalayan would probably be happier with this bike 
if you're going to ride 20 percent of the time on gravel and the rest of the time on pavement this might be the bike for you the three reasons i would get the standard himalayan over this are the weather protection the 21 inch front tire which allows you more rugged terrain you know there's going to do a lot more off-roading and then the luggage carrying capacity of the front i used to look at this as the little brother to the standard himalayan and i will say that i was wrong about that this is a bike all on its own. It's got some very unique characteristics in the Himalayan lineup. It does some things really, really well. It, it's a much better pavement and town bike than the standard Himalayan is. You know what, we're gonna take it for another, uh, we'll take it for another ride tomorrow and we'll come up with a absolute conclusion at that point. It's been a lot of fun. If you're interested in the Royal Enfield, Triumph, newer used, classic British bike. If you need accessories, apparel, anything like that, get yourselves over to BaxterCycle.com or go visit Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa, the mighty metropolis of Marnie, Iowa. Look at this thing. Isn't this just a hoot? You can just spin around in a circle. <laughs> it's just absolutely great. This is a very fun motorcycle. I just love it. Now, if the weather is nice where you're at, get yourself out on your motorcycle and go for a ride. Wahoo!